Hey friends, it's me, your pal Kelly Zemnikas, and welcome to episode number 37 of It'll Be Fine, the socially distant baking food chat show. I hope you're okay today. Um, on today's show, we are making K.H. Brownies. What is that? Fair question. Katherine Hepburn's brownie recipe. Katherine Hepburn, the force of nature, the phenomenal woman, um, fantastic actress, uh, one of my favorite movies of hers, uh, Woman of the Year. I encourage you to check it out. So um, she's got this brownie recipe. That's quite the recipe. Uh, she liked her brownie to be, oh, I hate this word, moist. Um, yeah. So I'm baking today. We are heading to California, heading to LA, to bake with another force of nature, another phenomenal woman, one of whom I'm so happy to call a friend, the producer, the actor, the wonderkind, Naomi Sinekis. Yay! I'm so glad she's with us today, and uh, we're going to chat and talk and bake, and it's going to be amazing. Um, Naomi created this amazing community called the Firecracker Department. I highly suggest you check their website out. And um, speaking of LA, the charity that we're offering some love and some attention to today is Beauty to the Streets. Fairly new group to me. I saw them on TV recently and I was blown away. So you gotta check them out. Beauty to the Streets is doing just that, bringing beauty to the streets of LA and offering love and community to those who are homeless in the streets of LA. Um, doing it through food, through companionship, through a bit of beauty, you know, like maybe a bit of makeup, maybe some shampoo. Uh, gosh, guys, give them some time for sure. Uh, it's episode 37 of It'll Be Fine, and we got brownies. How great is that? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. going to need sugar doing some spins today eggs why didn't I put this in front of me I don't know but we're going with the spin cult <laughs> cult it's kosher salt is what I was trying to say vanilla chocolate flour um and you don't need much flour. You actually need about a quarter cup. There you go, who knew? Uh, you are also going to need some butter. We got that over here, bam. And um, if you are so inclined, walnuts, I've established on this show, I fucking hate walnuts, so they're not going in my brownies. But if you like them, do it. Uh, they also suggest pecan or pecan, eh, whatever you want. You know what, you could probably do any kind of nut. Uh, I am just going to choose not to because I actually don't like uh, nuts in a brownie. So uh, there you is. That is what you need. So let's hit the stove. The first thing you are going to do is set your oven, preheat your oven to 325. Okay, so do that first. Always a, usually a first step in a recipe is setting your oven. The next thing you are going to do is... Take your pan and grease your pan. Uh, do it with butter, coconut oil, whatever. Um, butter content is high for these brownies to give that nice fudginess. So uh, I probably recommend dousing it in butter. Alrighty. And then this is what we're gonna start with. We are not doing a double broiler technique to melt chocolate, usually the way I have always done it. We're going to Take a saucepan here, crank it, and we're going to take one stick of butter. Now, of course, if you are using salted butter, please do not add the salt required. Not much, but just don't because you're gonna have salt in here. This is unsalted butter. A stick is going in like that. And we are going to melt this, just show you here. So we're gonna take our stick and once that is um, 
Once that is all melted together, gonna add the chocolate. Okay, so we're at a point where the butter is coming together nice. So we've got this little stuff happening. So what I'm going to do now is add in uh, the chocolate. So I originally thought it should have all been melted, but it says to melt together. So we're gonna do that. And we're just gonna whisk, whisk it together. Um, basically, you're just making a nice little chocolate bath for all of this. So let's show you what's happening. So yeah, we're just getting this, this all together. Um, and hey, for those who are already complaining about the camera work on this show, uh, suck it. <laughs> all right. Um, how's everybody doing out there? I've got my bowl, got my powder, and they say, well, she says the trick to this brownie mixture is um, not too much flour, and I get it, because sometimes, right, Matt? We've made brownies, he's nodding, and there's so much flour, it's cake. Bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. That looks good, hey? Look at that. All right, so that's whisk together. Remove from heat and stir in the sugar. How much sugar do you need a cup? Again, I'm making do with what we got, but I know you're supposed to use, oh wait, flour? Air. Okay, so we're gonna do a cup of, it's brown sugar, and I don't know how many people are bakers out there. What kind of, what kind of chaos is gonna happen if I use brown sugar instead of white sugar? Anybody? Eggs. That is the next thing to go in. Um, and then once this is all together, we're going to add in our vanilla. And she requires one teaspoon. I'm being very risky and I'm eyeballing this. I'm a professional. <laughs> don't do that at home, guys. I don't recommend it. Okay, so doing that, stirring all together. And the next thing we're going to do is do a pinch of kosher salt. That's a good pinch. And then we're going to throw in just the one quarter cup of flour that Miss Hepburn requested. Mix that all together. Whoa! All right. When you're mixing, don't get too excited. This is, I'm excited. I feel like there's, you know, sometimes you have like money cake. This is gonna be like a money brownie, but instead of money, it'll be a big chunk of sugar. This is looking very good. Thank you for your, I, I think if I'd added more flour, that would be a panic, a panic move. The oven timer is about to go off. We got 60 seconds. Uh, I've baked so far for about 35 minutes. The recipe says no more than 40. So we're just seeing how this turns out. We'll do a little poke with a knife and make sure it is good to go. Uh, once again, Catherine Hepburn's PBS Dot org is where you can find Katherine Hepburn's brownie recipe. Uh, she was quite the lady. Her first movie, I love this title, A Bill of Divorcement. That just, that just rolls off the tongue. That sounds like a murder mystery movie of the week. Just sounds kind of intense, doesn't it? Uh, and she won four Oscars and one Emmy. That she did. Alrighty. I was saying earlier, my favorite movie of hers is Woman of the Year. Check it out. Fantastic romantic comedy with Spencer Tracy, um, who she had a long love affair with, but he was married. Drama. There was no bill of divorcement for him. <laughs> okay, saved by the bell. Alrighty. Let's see how this looks, shall we? Alrighty. So, let's just do a little pan down. This smells fucking awesome but 
we look a little like we still need a bit more bake. It looks like it's baked more around the edges, if you can see. And just to prove my point here, let's just do a little test. Actually, it's clean as a whistle. Yeah, you know what? I think we're good. So I am going to do another poke here. We want a fudgy brownie. Okay, you know what? I'm going to call this done. Uh, I would have thought by by the visual of it uh, that it didn't look finished, but I think we're good, man. You do not want to overbake these. The ghost of Katherine Hepburn will come to your house and slap you in the face. How we kind of got to know each other, right? It was the Walk of Fame, Canada's Walk of Fame. Yes! That was that how I we first met. It was funny. I was thinking, I was like, was it through Comedy Bar? Well, but I would have seen you at Second City like many years ago, just as a as a fan of, of you know going to shows. But I think the first time I really got to talking to you was that award show uh, with George Reinblatt. Yeah, when I was writing for um, Trish Stratus. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I love Trish Stratus so much. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. That was like a hundred years ago. But yeah, it was about two thousand four, two thousand five. I mean, who's counting? Really, who's counting? <laughs> Which feels like hundred years ago. Children. <laughs> I remember though. I remember Trish because Trish had done um, something with Second City, and then she called me. And she was like, "Do you want to come and write for me for this?" And I remember going, oh man, I'm, I'm a writer. Like it was the first time that I actually felt like a writer, writer, when you're like following people around on set to try and punch things up and, and working yeah. with George was like a treat too. So it was really, yeah, really fun. And that job just changed a lot for me because I had just before that gig, I had bought a condo. So I was a first time homeowner. Wow. I had been working at CBC and then I was suddenly unemployed. So I went for months owning property and not knowing how to pay my mortgage and that job went to my like spam box and I just happened to be checking it and the day before it had been sent and it was a company I'd never worked before worked for before insight productions insight yeah and that job saved my butt because oh I God. didn't have any work and then I got to meet you guys and then my movie boyfriend Brendan Fraser wasn't that wild? That was also like a step into like celebrity zone when I was like oh um, emailing Jim Cuddy and like going over text yeah. with uh, Andrea Martin and things like that. There was like, oh, 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 this is a whole other level of connection. And yeah, I just got goosebumps thinking about that. Like the for a brief period, I had memorized Jim Cuddy's email address. Just as a Blue Rodeo fan, I was like, I hold something very important. <laughs> Yeah, but it really, like, didn't it also shine a light that we're like, oh, man, we're all just creators? Like, there was part of it. I remember, I can't remember who it was. I was on, they were on the red carpet, and I remember seeing them as they had a little break from red carpet going, hey, um, you haven't sent me your intro yet. Do you want to send me your intro? And she, I remember her going like, oh, oh it was Jennifer. Um, it was, the, she was from, it, um, I want to say Jennifer Coolidge, but that's yeah. Not. It's Jennifer Coolidge. It was yeah. Jennifer Coolidge. You're right. And she was Matchbox, like, oh, right. She wrote it yeah. on a Matchbox. Yeah, because I was. She was like, oh, here's my intro. Why don't you just say something like this? I'm like, oh, fuck. And I was like <laughs> writing it like on a Matchbox in my heels on the red carpet. But that was kind of the the joy of that whole gig too. Oh so my god. Fun. I remember when when the PA came in with that Matchbox and Brendan Fraser was sitting beside me because he hadn't written his speech and we were trying to figure out what we could do together and yes. I started freaking out and he was like calm down yeah 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 it's just jokes we're just writing jokes at the end of the day <laughs> and speaking of celebrities we tucked into a, a celebrities recipe for today's show Cat I love Pepper. this idea oh my do you God. always do this in that show do you always like connect with like a celebrity recipe no this just worked out magically because oh, I think we had talked about brownies and then I was googling I think I was trying to find the recipe I originally was gonna do yes and yes. this popped up and I was like yes. oh my god this is perfect because I feel like she would have been in the firecracker department I mean god can you imagine <laughs> she's like the original firecracker um I just loved it well I suggested brownies because I'm like that's something I think I can figure out because yeah. I think you were like what about this kind of pie and I'm like Bleh. <laughs> I don't know if I had the right ingredients. I'm not a big baker. But then also to like see her, like the write-up in that recipe was so yeah. interesting. And I knew about the pants thing. I knew that 
that story about when she was for like they stole her pants from her trailer because they didn't want her looking too masculine and so she just walked around in her knickers all day which i just i just love somebody actually suggested having like a katherine hepburn knickers day where we walk around in our in our undies and uh in protest that or in celebration that we don't have to have, wear pants if we don't want to that should happen i wrote down her birthday is may 12th so i feel like maybe may 12th. not if we don't wait a second i said if we don't have to wear pants if we don't want to i meant skirts we can wear whatever we want ladies <laughs> right <Enjoy it. laughs> exactly. um when's her birthday uh may the 12th oh wow yeah look at that all coming together so it kind of all magically works um yeah and she had her i wrote down her mom was a suffragette and her dad i uh, talked about sex ed and sexual safety yeah so she came from like i feel like a very cool household yeah i mean does not surprise us look at her she's just cool yeah yeah <laughs> i have something in common with her um that is is kind of unusual her voice really shook when she spoke and yeah. for those who don't know why that was she had something called essential tremor i did not know that which i have and it mimics parkinson's it affects mostly the upper portion of the body arms neck and head and that's why her voice reverberated like that because apparently as i get older that's something that i might so i'm i'm you're gonna be sounding like katherine hepburn that's so beautiful maybe i wore pants to my high school prom so i feel like i'm on the same I wore yeah. a pantsuit. So I'm I, that, that's groundbreaking. I also would not join girl guides or brownies because oh. they wouldn't let me wear pants. Oh my gosh. And they were, because that was their uniform. And in those, yeah. in those days, in the olden days, I would ride my horse down to the school and they were like, no, you have to wear the uniform, which is a skirt. And I'm like, well, then I guess I'm not part of this. I'm Did, like but it. I, okay, so we had different, yeah, here's mine as well. I, lovely i put some it, salt on mine oh salt would have been nice so this yeah. is the thing that she said because it's only a quarter cup of flour yeah and and i was mixing it and i know i did a little preview of this but like i was like oh man this is really goopy yes and i think Very i added funny. too much flour yeah it's a bit cakey yours came out cakey it's a bit i mean my husband was like no problem this is fantastic <laughs> step away from the brownie tray but uh for me, it's a bit cakey. I like it when it's a little bit moist. I've got to say, mine's pretty. Mine's pretty damn fudgy. And um, one bite of this, it's not so bad. I took a middle piece. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, mine's a little underdone, but this is probably one of the better brownies I've had. I'm not gonna lie. I also grabbed it out of the oven when it wasn't 40 minutes. I think she said 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I took it out before 40 minutes. Me too. And I thank goodness, because 40 would have been way too, I would say 30, and then like keep your eyes on it. Yeah, that's a good rule of thumb. Like any recipe, I find you really have to play with how your oven's doing, because right. it can cook a lot quicker, a lot slower. But when I took it out, um, I felt like it looked like it was underdone. But it gave me a nice shiny crust. It did, me too. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, we gotta talk fast before I finish this, and then I'll be like all jacked up on sugar. I just had a coffee, so I won't be sleeping till tomorrow. I also <laughs> use brown sugar instead of white sugar, which I don't. I don't know. Maybe that because I know there's molasses or something in brown sugar, but that's all we had in this quarantine world. Which is fine because right now things are really hard to grab, and I was kind of grateful it didn't need that much flour because flour is not easy to find right now. I know. So. It's yeah. kind of disappeared, but I really. I also. Like this. Did you put walnuts in yours? I hate walnuts. Oh, so I, I love it, and I didn't have any, but I feel like walnuts for me make the brownie. Fair enough. Yeah, oh. I I enjoy a brownie with no no nut component to it. Gotcha. <laughs> I almost added like sunflower seeds because I wanted some sort of crunch. And then I was like, that's playing with fire. Like that could be, because that could change the taste entirely. That's so wild, because I almost added sesame seeds. I bet sesame seeds would be good. Probably. But I had that same feeling too of like, maybe I'll put something in, because she had something in it. But then I thought, no, I'm like, going to back away. I don't know. I had a bunch of like wood chips. I'm going to just throw some wood chips in there and see if that just adds some texture and, you know. <laughs> 
Yeah. It was fun though. I, I oh, like the baking challenge. Yeah. Um, Matt's been making pizza dough. And today he made hamburger buns and we both don't eat bread at all. But in this time we're like, I guess we're making bread now. <laughs> They're beautiful. They're beautiful hamburger buns. Fantastic. Are you cooking more than usual right now? Are you someone who is like a big home cook or do you do takeout? No, no, I'm not a big, we don't do a lot of takeout. Matt cooks. Yeah. We'll do like takeout every once in a while, but not, you know, the thing about takeout that, that stops me is the containers. Yeah. Like I really feel real heavy about like the containers that come into my, my world. Yeah. Um, but this time Matt's been really cooking the most. I'm more of like a, an alchemist cook where like I look in the fridge. I'm like, okay, we have marshmallows, spinach, and an yeah. old onion. Let's go. Um, so I like that kind of stuff. I mean, I usually don't, I shouldn't subject anybody else to finding out what marshmallow soups, spinach soup tastes like, but um, I gotta say, I'm I'm quite similar to you. I love to like Mag like MacGyver yeah. with my kitchen and be like, what can I put together? Yeah, um, yeah, I do that. I do that a fair bit. One thing, you yes, yes, of course, yes. The other thing I do with marshmallows is take whatever cereal I have and just make Rice Krispie squares, but it's like random, random yeah. cereal stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I like I don't know. That's like my um, Eastern European background of like finishing everything off and making sure that nothing gets wasted. And it's very true. Now I'm Latvian. What is your Eastern? Your Lithuanian. High five. I think we might've known that too. I feel like we talked. I feel like we're 20. Right? We're really 20. Yeah. So Lithuanian Estonian. Yeah. My father um, was born in uh, Vilnius. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's. Yeah. My dad's, my dad's from Latvia and uh, my mom is from Britain. So that's my... My mom's from Britain. Look we have that. like... Look, at we're basically sisters. We're pretty much, yeah. Exactly. yeah. We got the like Eastern European round head thing going on. Yeah. Very. Anytime I take a photo with other people, my noggin just like takes up the entire photo. Oh my God. How's your hat shopping? Um, me. Not easy. Not easy. Oh. We got to... It's a real specific hat for sure. <laughs> I think I just have like four baseball caps that are my go-to because that's, that's just fair. too tiring. I no. just hurt my head. And headbands. I can't keep a headband on my head. I want to I wanna talk about the fashion that you're wearing where headbands is coming into play these days. I'm not against it. I'm a fan. I just want to know when you're like, you know what I'm going to accessorize with is that headband. And, um, well, I can't now because restaurants are closed, but I work at a, a restaurant on the weekends here in Toronto. And I do a headband just to keep my face. Oh, oh, like a hairband. I'm thinking like Richard no. Simmons headband. <laughs> Those oh. could come back. We don't know. It it totally could. Um, I'll I'll work on that for the next yeah. episode of the show. I'll just a headband for your honor. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah. This one that goes this way, not. Yeah, yeah still. I like both things. <laughs> I like everything. I'm like that little girl in the mirror. I like my hairband. I like my headband. I yeah. like my whole life. Exactly. I was talking about this the other day in one of our <clears throat> firecracker department events about like how we're missing human touch. Yeah. And like, how do we do that? And they were talking about like when you put like hand cream on to make sure you're actually like recognizing that's human touch and you're not just like yeah. doing it technically and yeah, no, exactly. But it's, it's uh, yeah, it's it's really it's tough not to have human contact and 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 just kind of being in rooms with people like at a coffee shop that I'm not necessarily talking to. I love doing that in writing and just not being able to do that now. So I'm people like, watching. Yeah. yeah. So I'm super grateful for this and and being able to engage in an activity with with someone like yourself and it sort of makes it feel a bit more. Like things are normal, whatever normal is now. Yeah. God, as soon as I can connect with folks, I feel much more normal. It's when I go for, I mean, I'm, I'm a heavy Zoom user, so I'm, yeah. I'm uh, doing that a lot, but I do love the different versions of connection, like just this kind of thing where we're sort of, you know, we've got the brownie as a focus, but we're also okay. hanging out. And then we have like a games night, which is just like strictly hang out. So there's different levels of, of Zooming that uh, serve different aspects for me. Absolutely. I've been enjoying the dance parties. 
Oh, you've been doing the dance party. <laughs> With Laura, are you doing the dance like no one's watching? Yes, I am party? on Tuesdays so on Facebook Live. Yep. Awesome. And those are just like super fun because in my head, I feel like I'm a fantastic dancer, but I think in reality, I'm more like Elaine from Seinfeld. <laughs> I, I don't know. That, uh, that's extraordinary. But also like who cares, right? Like at the end of the day, like really who cares what, how we dance? It just move your body back and forth and enjoy it. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one quote that I found for, for Catherine when I looked through the article of her brownie recipe was a quote that I had heard before. Um, but I never, it never clicked in that it was associated with a recipe. It's her three, uh, like, rules to abide by. Number yeah. one, never quit. Number two, be yourself. And number three, don't put too much, too flour, much flour in your brownies. I mean, never quit. I got, be myself. I do, I, I challenge it every day. And the flour yeah. thing, I think I, I overdid it, Catherine Hepburn. But I learned my lesson. What are your three? My three rules to live by? be kind be a good listener and just send love out to the world i think those are my three nice. things yeah we had one matt and i had one which was um never give up don't get bitter and don't hold hands on garbage day because it's really awkward when you're trying to navigate with all the bins in front of the sidewalk but i would also say like be kind and include people because yeah I feel yeah. like that's such a big one. I, I just hate like how that, like for me, that feeling of being in a place where, you know, you feel isolated and alone and we've all felt like that. So now totally. whenever we have a firecracker department, I'm all um, event. And even if it's here, like if somebody mm -hmm. is sort of like, you know, sitting on the sidelines on their phone too much, <laughs> if it was a live event, then we're always like, get out of there, come and join this conversation. Like you don't exactly. have to be alone. Exactly. Another thing, and I've got this, I've got this on my wall. I read this in Amy Poehler's book. Yes, please. Uh, do the thing. Yeah, do the thing. You that's a good stop one. Stop just talking about it. Get out there do and do it. And I, that's like probably going to be my next tattoo when I can get a tattoo. <laughs> so, yeah. So we have friend. the like take action. We say that a lot, okay. like because there's a lot of discussion of like inspiration and oh my god, I yeah. I saw this speech and I was so inspired or I saw this show and then it's like okay, so what does that inspiration take you to? And how is that action implemented? That's huge for, for me and for our vision with Firecracker Department. Because yeah. otherwise we're just like sort of swimming in this like, I'm inspired, which is great. <laughs> but like, like to what end, you know, you got to put it into action. Mm -hmm.